I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special report this Sunday where I'm going to discuss uh, the election results with Perry from Florida as well as the story about FEMA, one of FEMA's representatives, apparently telling her workers to skip houses that had Trump signs on it. We're going to talk about that and a few more stories coming up in just a minute here. Let's see if we can't get Perry on the line. Let's see here. All right, let's see. <laughs> Google me, bitch! Google me! All right, let's 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 call up a, a story here. Um, first, before we get Perry on the line, I just want to um, reiterate the fact that make sure everything works here, that Trump won. Trump uh, won Arizona. So now the total electoral college is 312 to Kamala Harris's 226. So this might be a, a good time to bring in Perry. What's happening here? There you are, Perry. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, Rudy. You know, it's it's almost like a, a dream that won't go away. <laughs> 312 to 226, the only, well, apparently you won all the battleground states, but apparently the there was a battleground in Minnesota um, that he didn't win where Tim Walsh is governor. But all the others, he won handedly. It seems like a red wave. And I'm going to go over some of the numbers here, and then we could talk about what's going on in the uh, in the races that are left to call here. So apparently, 312 to 226 in the presidential. The House, which is most concerning, 204 to 212 with several seats in Iowa, Maine, Colorado, Ohio, Oregon, California. There are four seats in California, Washington State, where it's it's a lock because it's GOP against GOP. Alaska and Arizona, those races still haven't been called. And in the Senate, it's 52 to 46 with the Kerry Lake uh, race being called. And that was, I thought for sure, that would go to Kerry Lake. Oh, and actually the Nevada race has been called. I thought Brown uh, would win there, uh, the veteran, he lost. So it seems like every race that they're slow walk, walking, and they even where McClinton was called in Pennsylvania in the Senate race, they want to challenge that seat. But it seems like every race that they're slow walking, as what happened in 2022 and 2020, the Democrats come out on top. So what's your what's your overall feeling about the race in general and what I just talked about? Well, my overall feeling is it's morning in America again. Um, our boy didn't just win. He bitch slapped her. He... It, you know, it's one thing to win the Electoral College. It's another thing to win the Electoral College convincingly. And it's a whole other thing to win the Electoral College convict, uh, con, con, ben, I'm sorry, convictionally and to without question 
win the popular vote. Right. That and that is a mandate. Okay. So that's the good. No, that's the great actually. Um, because we know what the other side is going to do. They're going they're already doing it. If you listen to the talking head shows uh shows, you know, they're afraid that there are going to liter- be literal witch hunts if they are not individuals are not um of Christian faith. They are convinced that anyone who is of minority status will be uh isolated and um not be given a fair shrug in this country and it just goes on and on and on from there so that's what their game plan is my attitude to that is you go right ahead you continue to deny why you lost this election you didn't listen to the average joe schmo who said motherfucker i can't feed my family anymore i have to decide between buying groceries or putting gas in my car so I can get the work. And you're worried about whether or not trans people are going to be looked at in, in, in a, in a uh, dark colored lens. And that is why I'm very happy today because if they continue down this road over the next two years, you know, with the exception of GW, um, when he was in the white house, his, he, he is the only modern day president that did not lose seats in the midterms during uh, uh, 2002. And if the Democrats continue to stick to this ridiculous um, thought pattern, then we really won't have to worry about losing seats come 2026. Right. Now, Uh, that's all the good news. That's all the good news. Here's where I'm concerned. You already spoke to it. They are slow walking, and historically, every time they have slow walked individual elections, they, meaning the Democrats, always win. Now, I don't care if you're left, right, or center. If you are a person who looks any type of political vote casting, you can't help but say something smells here because there is no way one party can win every single slow walked election historically, right? Unless there's cheating going on, and this always happens in blue states and in blue cities, right? It doesn't happen in red cities, yep. it doesn't happen in red states. So that's why I'm concerned because um, of the 20 congressional seats that remain, I believe um, at least half of those 20 seats that are still up for grabs are in uh, California. Yeah. Um, the perfect example is uh, Carrie Lake and um, Sam Brown. I was going into midnight on election night, Sam Brown was up by more than a couple points. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So how is it we get to this point five days later and all of a sudden he ends up losing? Yeah. What are the numbers, Rudy? I've been waiting to see what the numbers are and I haven't seen them. Yeah. Is it inside a point? Uh, yeah, they all are inside a point and uh, unfortunately it doesn't trigger an automatic uh, recount. Um, but the fact is, this is exact replay of 2022, where in the Southwest you had these races that were slow walked. Uh, Masters was always behind, um, unfortunately, like Masters, uh, but he lost in a slow walk. But a lot of people lost in a slow walk. Carrie L- Lake uh, lost her bid for governor in a slow walk, and there were many other races like this. The good thing is the GOP is on the ground in California. Uh, to assure those red districts stay red. Um, I want to move on to some headlines, though. The New York Times, a stock market rallies to its best week in over a year. President-elect Donald Trump's win, coupled with a quarter-point interest rate cut, 
from the Federal Reserve pushed major stock indexes into record territory. Um, and then, so that's obviously, there are a lot of things happening just because Donald Trump was elected. He doesn't even have to take office before things start happening. And um, I want to jump right now to the fact of this in assassination conspiracy, which worries me. Wall Street Journal is reporting Iranian agents plotted to kill Donald Trump. Justice Department says failed plot highlights attempts to target U.S. officials. AP reports the Justice Department brings criminal charges to an Iranian murder for hire plan targeting Donald Trump. Iranian murder for hire, hire plot against Trump reveals two New Yorkers also busted and plan to kill journalists. This is where my problem, it sounds like an FBI cover because... The complaint, which refers to President-elect as victim four, also charges Brooklyn native Carlisle Rivera, or Rivera, 49, and Staten Islander Jonathan Lodehalt, 36, for murder for hire, conspiracy to commit murder for hire for money laundering. And the guy, the Iranian, or, or was uh, the Afghani, actually, who was going to uh, take part in this uh, murder for hire plot, who apparently what I would say is the, um, which is the FBI informant, in, and I believe this case, uh, initially tasked his cohorts with killing Iranian-American activist journalist Masid Alinejad, an outspoken critic of the Tehran regime, but then went on to use them, possibly use them for the Donald Trump assassination. My problem with this is the fact that I believe that they're going to use this as cover for uh, a U.S. assassination of plot on Donald Trump and just blame it on Tehran so they could go to war with Iran and take out Donald Trump at the uh, at the same time. Your uh, your thoughts on this? Well, um, in a nutshell, and to save time, ditto. Yeah. I mean, we've seen we've seen this movie before, okay? Um, it, it, it's playing out again right before our eyes. Uh, I have really very little to add to what you just said, right. except they don't. Yeah. All right. Well, that is that is true, but I just wanted to touch on that because it just seems like this happened right before Butler two that uh, the. Uh, federal law enforcement arrested a Pakistani who was planning uh, an assassination on Donald Trump and trying to recruit people for the for another Iran plot. And now they're doing it again. So I would suspect there'll be another assassination attempt on Donald Trump before he takes office. But let's move on to the other headline here. New York Post, grocers outrage after Whoopi Goldberg calls them pigs over food inflation on The View. And grocery store owners clap back at Whoopi Goldberg from The View when she said that they were pigs because of this false claim that grocery store owners are gouging prices and it's not the fact that it's inflation. Your pocketbook is bad, she says. Not because Biden did anything. Now, Biden didn't spend any money. Not because the economy is bad. Your grocery bills are what they are because folks that own grocery stores are pigs. Your comments on the pig herself? Um, you know, I, I have reached a point um, with Whoopi that I, I am convinced she no longer has a brain. And I say that with all sincerity, because to make a ridiculous comment like that, when I, I don't know how old Whoopi is, I, I think she's older than me and I'm in my mid sixties. Yeah. Uh, she's lived more than two thirds of her life, maybe three quarters of her life. She's gone through three, if not four major recessions and the result of printing money in each of the coming out of each of these recessions, which precipitated high inflation. And she's going to turn around and say after her boy, Uncle Joe, printed over two trillion dollars worth of monopoly money that it's not Uncle Joe, it's 
it's the greed of grocers. Yeah, who make who make like one or two percent margin? Come on. Exactly. Exactly. So, add to that. Well, Whoopi, if you're going to blame Wallbaums and 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 Publix and Ralphs and all the other, you know, Kroger and all the other big big chain um, grocers, why aren't you blaming Exxon, Mobil, um, Shell? And all the other, you know, major oil companies for gouging you too, because after all, you know, oil is running right now. If you look at a barrel of oil, last time I checked, which was three weeks ago, it's running somewhere a little over seventy dollars a barrel. Historically, when oil was that cheap, we were paying roughly uh a dollar fifty, a dollar eighty a gallon. So, if we're paying, as I am here in Florida, and granted I use premium, if we're paying three dollars and fifty cents a gallon for gasoline now, but yet oil is running less per barrel than it was um, four years ago, after Uncle Joe came into office. How how are you not blaming the oil companies for gouging? You didn't give her a chance. <laughs> she'll she'll get to that. She'll get to that. And and of course, think uh, talking about blaming. I'm going to segue here to this AP article. U.S. judge tosses Illinois ban on semi-automatic weapons. Governor pledges that's Governor Pritzker pledges swift appeal, and it is the blame because one knucklehead, a leftist knucklehead, mind you that shot up a 4th of July parade from a rooftop. They banned um, semi-automatic rifles um, under the same kind of blame game where you're blaming legal gun owners for something someone did that wasn't legally uh, allowed to have that gun, which was a young person who, again, took his father's gun and those people were actually charged. The fathers, the parents of those that the shooter were charged um, in this crime. Um, but the point is, you're blaming one person. You're blaming the entirety of legal gun owners, where 99 percent of legal gun owners don't commit crimes with their weapons. So you're right. you're blaming one person who actually the actual person who. Did, committed the crime, wasn't even entitled to that weapon. So a quick comment on that, and then I want to get to the big FEMA story. Um, well, it's it's more of the same. It It is done deliberately because the whole purpose of wanting to ban any one type of weapon is not for the purpose of banning that one weapon, it's to begin the domino effect, as my son just said, um, so that they can completely eviscerate the Second Amendment. Right. And by the time, yeah, and by the time they, they accomplish the goal of wiping uh, ARs, which are nothing more than hunting rifles, off of the, um, the market, then it's only a matter of time before they say you can't even have a six shot revolver. Right. Well, we'll let you, we'll let you have a shotgun, right. <laughs> but like my son just said, a single shot, double barrel. Yeah. Right. We'll let you have that. But, but no, 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 no more Glocks, no more Smith and Wessons, no more, no, no more Henry's. No, you're, yeah. no, no, you're done. Yeah. Like you're Canada, done. like Canada. Yeah. That's the, uh, like, I have this argument with my brother all the time that I'm like, what's the difference between a, an AR 15 and um, a carbine? And he doesn't know. He says the bullets, the bullets, they tumble. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, here's the thing I'd like to say all the time to, to liberals who are, of course are, pro-abortion can i can i get you to answer a simple question for me and they say sure what you believe we should further regulate the use of weapons in this 
personal personal weapons in this country. Yes, yes, yes. We don't need all all of these ridiculous assault weapons and this, that, and the other thing. Okay. So you don't have any problem with the Second Amendment, though, right? Well, that's different. But no, I don't. I don't have a problem with the Second Amendment. You should have the right to defend yourself. Okay. So you want to regulate what is already a given right under our constitution. But yet when it comes to regulating abortion, you're telling me I want to ban it. How is it you can see regulation is okay with one thing, which is a given right where there are no limitations. Right. But yet something that is not a right, you say it is, but under the constitution it isn't. Right. You don't think there should be any regulation. Restriction, yeah, exactly. They can they can never answer that question. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to the argument with my brother, too. He's AR, AR-15s, it's the caliber. And I go, well, actually, the standard round for AR-15 is a very small caliber. The two two three is a little bit bigger than a twenty two caliber, and it's a little more powerful, uh, you know, round. Hence why, hence why it's called a two two. Three. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and also, the AR-15 can be chambered in many different calibers. So there goes your argument. In any case, I want to move on to this Florida um, thing here. Let's let's go to the article from the New York Post. FEMA official who told workers to avoid Florida homes with Trump signs is fired. And I believe you're familiar with this story. Oh, I'm I'm intimately familiar with it now. Right. Yeah. So let me just uh, 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 get the audience up to speed here. So a woman, a uh, black woman, not that that matters, but I'm just putting that out there. No, I think it does in this right. case. Right, and so she was a, a supervisor for workers who were going through uh, the Florida areas, uh, Republican Florida areas that were uh, hit by Hurricane Milton, and she told her charges in a memo. <laughs> no, she wrote this shit, wrote this shit down, she, but also she, confirmed it in, in in a phone call to avoid houses with Trump political signs. So she's been fired, and FEMA is saying, "Well, this is uh, egregious," which it is. But my connection here, and then I'm going to get your comment, is uh, the fact that people are deluded by the propaganda put out by the Democrat Party and the mainstream media into believing that people that voted for Trump, now close to 60%, are not worthy of any sort of consideration because these- We're garbage. Right. These people unfoundedly believe the rhetoric that- even my brother, that Republicans or people that support Trump are racist, white nationalists, white supremacists, Christian nationalists that want to do bad things to people on the left or round up trans people or LGBTQ or or but this is what bothers me. Even though we're constitutionalists, we want to take away other Americans' rights. So a quick comment on, on because this is in your neck of the woods, uh, this FEMA mm-hmm. official. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's what DEI gets you. So this is this woman is incapable of thinking beyond her own misperceived biases. And um, I know it's not a one-off. It's just that we caught this one because she was stupid enough to actually put it in a written memo. Um I say that because you look at what's going on throughout the southeast quadrant of our country, starting with Tennessee and North Carolina from Hurricane Helene. There are still, as of as of this week, there are still bodies being recovered from the 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 incredible flooding that took place in North Carolina, in the, in the mountains of North Carolina. That is all Republican territory for the state of Carolina, with the exception of Asheville. And what did 
Uncle Joe's um, FEMA, of course, under Alejandro, okay, do. When, when Trump made a phone call to Elon and said, Elon, we got to get, I'm sorry, you got to get um, Starlink in the hands of these people. They're, they've been cut off from the world. They've got to be able to communicate. Within hours, Elon Musk was delivering Starlink to these people who were literally cut off from society. What did, what did Uncle Joe's FEMA do? I think forget the Wi-Fi bill that I put forward that ended up going nowhere. No, no. Um, my son is talking about the Wi-Fi bill that uh, Biden was trying to push through that went nowhere. Yeah. Uh, let's get back. Let's get back to Elon. Okay. Right. Well, the, the Biden did, administration was trying to block the uh, Starlink. Correct. Yep. Correct. What did Biden's uh, black ops people do, whether, whether it was a Black Hawk or a Chinook or whatever it was, in the darkness of, of night, there were, um, there were relief packages that were delivered to uh, churches in a specific town, don't remember which one. And in the dead of night, a helicopter came in because everything, obviously there were no buildings. It was just out in the open. It was sitting on, on tables and tents, came in and with the rotor wash, devastated all these supplies. There were no supplies left for the next yeah. day. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what's going on with, Biden. And that is yeah. the reason why people are still being pulled out of trees more than a month after Helene in um, North Carolina. In North Carolina. Yeah. So if that's going on and you have you have uh, the apparatchiks in, in uh, FEMA who were saying in the days in the first two weeks following Helene, no, 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 you can't you can't send that truck there. We're commandeering it. We will decide who gets those supplies. Yeah. That happened too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just in case in point where they believe the rhetoric from the administration that people aren't worthy of certain things. And then they go in and they make sure in some cases, it, including the black ops in, in North Carolina, make sure that civilian aid distribution is disrupted. So Correct. as the federal government always likes, they want to have an exclusive right of power. So, um, th and that's an unfortunate situation that we don't see that it goes further up the chain with uh, rhetoric, even though it's not in memos or other marching orders that we could definitely point out. But I could say that from rhetoric, if someone believes that, you know, certain parts of the uh, citizenry aren't worthy of aid. That just goes to show how successful their propaganda has been. And I want to get into a little bit more of this. Um, going to another New York Post article, Minnesota dad who ranted against Trump election, gunned down wife, ex-girlfriend, and his two kids in murder-suicide. And I'll just read from the article what the, the, to describe this this guy's mental health, who did have mental health problems, obviously. My mental health and the world can no longer peacefully ex coexist, he said. And a lot of the reason is religion, this guy Anthony Nephew wrote in July. I am terrified of religious zealots inflicting their misguided beliefs on me and my family. I have intrusive thoughts of being burned at the stake as a witch or crucified on a burning cross. Having people actually believe that I or my child or Satan or the Antichrist or whatever their favorite color boogeyman they are afraid of this week. So he goes on to say, Gilead, here, here come, re referencing the Handmaid's Tale, just going on to say how that this guy, Andrew Nephew, thought the Trump administration was going to act on him because he believed that there were a bunch of Christian nationalists that were going to round him up or burn him at the stake or whatever, went ahead and killed himself. 
his wife, his former girlfriend, and their two children. So this guy was a witch or a warlock, doesn't believe in the, using air quotes, Bible. And therefore, because of everything he's seen and heard, he turns to his God, whatever that God may be, I'd say Satan, but I'm, that's an opinion, and therefore murders his entire extended family. And somehow or other, the media portrays God-fearing Christians, Jews, and Muslims as the reason this man took the life of his entire lives of his entire family. Right. And I'm 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 supposed to hide my opinions, my views, my faith for fear that someone who doesn't believe in my God would therefore not only become fearful, but fearful enough to take not only their life, but the lives of his family and maybe the lives of total strangers, as which happened in Virginia right. over a year ago. I, this is insanity. Yeah. This is this is exactly what we're going to see more of, not less of, in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely believe that um, the rhetoric, I put this squarely on Joy Reid and the Democrats and others at MSNBC, uh, as I did for the Butler assassination, they keep putting out this rhetoric that isn't based in reality, it's not based on fact, coming to conclusions that aren't based on fact, and then disseminating your opinions about Trump being a fascist or or whatever, this is terrible, terrible, terrible stuff, um, and, and that it and, actually, and by the way, it actually by has the way, Rudy, wor- go ahead. world, it, uh, it actually has uh, consequences that people of weak uh, mental capacity, as this guy obviously and even admittedly had a, a mental illness, that these are the type of people that are affected by their rhetoric. And, include, and by the way, based, and, based on his um, his mental um, challenges, should never have been able to legally own a gun, but yet he did. Uh, well, apparently, we're, we're not even okay. sure, we're not even sure how he killed them all. I don't think it's even in the article if they were shot or what. Probably, but it goes back. It goes all the way back to the uh, Republican baseball game that was shot up by another leftist supporter who believed the rhetoric that Republicans were evil, and just like my brother says, all Republicans are racist. I mean, how do you come to such a generalization, and there's there's no basis in fact, uh, to come to such conclusions? They listen to MSNBC. MSNBC is a military-style propaganda machine that has real-world consequences. Uh, Parting words before we cut out here, Perry? Well, what I was going to say is not only is it PMS, NBC, it's all the alphabet channels. You need to go no farther than the witches on the view to see how even now, even nearly a week after having been bitch slapped by the American voters, they, they're, they're calling us every name under the sun. They're, 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 calling Trump every name under the sun and how people should should rise up against this this Nazism. It's not going to stop. And therefore, as you mentioned earlier in our conversation today, Trump is not in less risk of losing his life right now because now he's the president-elect, so he has a presidential veto. He's in more risk. It's, yeah. it's not it's not going to end and you're going to see more acts of hate against conservatives in the coming days weeks and months yep. it's not going to go away yep. because right yeah. because what kind of what kind of comments did you hear from the politicians out there including Kamala Harris and others uh, and and Tim Walz as well fight 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 I mean, those are Trump's words, but they said we're not going to stop the fight, 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 which is there to trigger the activists or people 
clip wanting to take out their pussy hats again. Um, like you said, this is just going to reactivate all the OFA people. And I brought this up uh, earlier in the week that I believe that the left is planning an insurgency, probably unarmed insurgency, but the mindset of an insurgency, which is dangerous in itself. I think it's going to be worse than that. And that's why I, I fear what's going to take place on January 20th. Yeah. Because they they were humiliated by the vote in the country on, on, on Tuesday. Yeah. My son just pointed out that in the state of Oklahoma, they outdid Florida. Yeah. They did not have one single blue county. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, what what I yeah, I'm sorry. What I predicted in 2022, the red wave only showed up in Florida because Florida had election integrity laws in place. Now that those pl- those laws were war- more widespread, particularly in red states, you saw the red wave materialize. I believe there was a red wave in 2022, but we didn't have the integrity laws in, in place to make that appear. Now we have, and we see exactly what's happening. Last, last but, word. But- yep. But we don't have that in California. We don't yep. have that in New York. Yep. We don't have that in Connecticut. As a matter of fact, your state of Connecticut just went in the opposite direction right. to Ex- make it easier to change. Right, exactly. They just, there was a referendum that I voted against that said um, they want to have mail out ballots, mail in ballots. In other words, no excuse absentee ballots. Now, whether they're going to have to prove they're citizens or not to receive these ballots, I don't know. Um, but like any supermajority, they're looking to lock in the Democrat supermajority with no chance of Republican re- reprieve. Well, Last word. What they're going to do is they're yep. going to have that little box, like you said, you have on your state ballot. Uh, I'm sorry, your your state voter registration uh, form to check off that you are you are you under penalty of law, on penalty of perjury. You are telling us by checking off this box, you're a citizen of the United States. Yeah. So once that's done, how many apparatchiks that work in the state government of Connecticut are going to ever call that check off of a box into question? No, never. It's not going to happen. No, or if it's left unchecked, you know. Right. Who, who, you know well, well, we have to assume. Right. It goes back to 24 years ago with hanging chat. Right. Remember well, that in yeah. my state of Florida? Yeah. Okay. We're never going to. Yeah, we're not going to. Like in most states, there's no verification. They just take them at their word um, that, you know, they're not a citizen. If they're ever caught, they could just go, oh, I didn't see the box. Um, last right. word, Perry, before I cut out here. Well, last word is it feels great to be an American today. <laughs> And um, we have to stay the course. People need to stay focused on how these last congressional elections go. Because without the House, then all this Magnus cannot get his agenda through. Right, exactly. Because there will be another impeachment inquiry if Hakeem Jeffries is be, if, if Hakeem House. Jeffries becomes Speaker of the House. Yeah, exactly. That I'll guarantee. So, yeah, everybody should keep their prayers going um, because don't stop praying now that Donald Trump is elected. Um, we, You should keep the prayers going um, for these House races because we need, I think, uh, six more seats, uh, uh, five or six more seats to get control of the House. And we need that at least for two years to get some of the most important stuff done. All right, thanks. But for I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold out because Rudy, I did say to you and your audience two weeks ago, I predicted we would pick up a minimum of four seats in the Senate. And I said, we would, we would gain five seats in the House. I yep. still think it's possible. Yep. I was right about the Senate. Let's see if I'm right about the House. All right. Thanks for joining me today, brother, for this special report. Um, Join me tomorrow, 10 a.m., live on Rumble for Rudy's Revelation podcast. Uh, good Good to hear from you, my brother. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Rudy. Thanks again for giving me the soapbox. We'll yeah. talk to you, I guess, in t- 48 hours. In Tuesday, yep. Yeah. You got it. All right. Have a good one. Yep. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. 
There goes Perry for this special report. He helped me out today talking about some much needed topics, including these house races uh, that are being slow walked and seem to be all turning Democrat. Well, they don't really finish counting until the Democrat wins, right? Um, All right, join me tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. for Rudy's Revelation podcast on Rumble. Thanks for joining me, everybody. See you tomorrow. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message.